Hi everyone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you dive into this video, let me tell you that this video is in continuation of part one, where we built a simple expense tracker using React plus Zestand. And in this video, we will be adding a backend to it using Python and Django. And also we will be integrating our backend with the frontend that we built in our previous video. So the expense tracker that you see here, uh, we basically built all of its UI and set up the Zestand store in the previous video. So I will encourage you to check that out first. Here we will see how you can create a model in Django and then how we can set up our serializers and set up our views. And then I will also show you how to use Postman for testing our API. And then we will finally integrate our API with the front end using Axios uh, library. So it is going to be a lot of fun. So let's dive into code now. Okay, so I've created a new folder. And here, let me first show you uh, what Python version I'm using. So I'm using the Python version 3.10.4. So you can see that. Now, uh, what I want to do is firstly, I want to create a virtual environment. So I will say Python minus M V E N V and I will name this environment as uh, maybe E N V only. Okay. So the virtual environment has been created E N V slash scripts slash activate to activate the virtual environment. And you can see here E N V named virtual environment has been activated. Uh, I will clear the terminal and I will install uh, two packages here. So I will say pip install firstly Django and another is Django rest framework. So the installation was complete and now I will start a new project here. So for that I will say Django admin start project expense tracker. Okay, so as you can see on my left, we have a folder of expense tracker. I will uh, go into that. So I will say expense tracker and inside this I will start an application for that. I will say Django admin start app. Uh, let's name it as expense only here. We'll hit enter and inside this we can see uh, we have our expense app initialized and obviously we have the expense tracker project, which is having the settings dot py file, right? And here in the installed apps, what I will do is I will add an app here by the name of expense. And apart from this, I will add rest underscore framework. Okay, so the next step is uh, inside my expense application, uh, there is a file called models. So what I will do here is I will create a model first for the expense that we are going to store. So I will call it as class expense which will inherit from models dot model inside this uh, I will be having uh, a name and apart from that the amount so I will say name models dot character field and let's give it a max length of let's say 256 apart from that I will have amount models dot uh, integer field and here we go uh, the model is created now let's run let's first create migrations and that migrate them so I will say python manage dot pi make migrations this will create the migrations file for us so you will be able to see migrations here uh, as you can see this one and let's now run the migrate command migrate so migrations are being applied okay cool so let's do one thing uh, i have an extension installed in my vs code that is the sqlite viewer because we are using this database only that comes by default with django so i will be using this extension to see what all data is being filled in my table so now if i click Control p and I type SQLite. So you can see we have our db.sqlite3 here. And here you might be able to see our app that is expense. Inside this, we have name and amount. And like this is a table that we created in our models. So I hope it is clear till now. Another thing uh, that is 
in our main urls file that is in the project we have to add another path so let's say i will call it as api slash for this i will import the include uh, from django dot urls and i will say include the name of my app that is expense dot urls because we have a urls file inside this okay we have to create it uh, okay so let's create it first i will say new file i will call it as urls.py and here we go and now inside this urls file i will do the same thing i will import this path util from django.urls and i will say url patterns will be an array and we will like add urls here later okay so after this uh, i will create another file called serializers.py so inside this i will say from rest framework import serializers and i will import my model as well so i will say from models import expense and i will create a class called expense serializer this will be serializers dot model serializer inside this i will have another class called meta inside this i will say uh, the model to be expense and fields to be id name amount okay so let's now uh, go to our views and here i will first import the generics from rest framework so i will say from rest framework import generics and i will import my serializer so from dot serializers import expense serializer and i will also import my model so i will say from dot models import expense okay so first i will start with creating the view for getting the list of expenses and at the same time to create a new expense basically get plus post cool so i will start by class expense list create view that will that will inherit from generics dot list create api view and inside this i will set query set is equal to expense dot objects dot all serializer class to be expense serializer so depending on what kind of request we are getting this particular view will create a new expense for us or return the list of expenses okay so now we will create a view for updating the expense plus deleting the expense basically uh, what we can say put plus delete for that i will say class expense not list expense update destroy view that will inherit from generics dot list not list generics dot uh, retrieve update destroy and inside this again i will copy the same thing paste it here uh, format it properly right so we are done with our views now we are left with creating actual urls on which we will be executing these uh, views so let's see 
in our URLs. Uh, okay, so here I will start with uh, defining a path. So for getting the list of all the expenses and for creating a new expense, I will just simply uh, let it remain empty. Uh, so let me just show you once. So I will say, I will uh, give the view here. So let me just import the views as well. From views, import expense list create view and expense update destroy view. Here I will say expense list create view dot as view. And for the name, I will give it as expense list create and for updating and deleting an expense uh, i will say something like path update forward slash it will take an id so in django rest framework that is the primary key that we need to uh, pass uh, for this i will say expense update destroy view as view and its name would be expense update destroy basically to delete okay so our urls are ready now we have to test it for that i will run a command that is python manage.py run server i need to run my server okay so that is running on this go to my postman so if i paste this here and i write api after this and if i click on send so in my response you will be able to see an empty uh, array because we have no expenses yet so let me just create a new expense so i will say post and in my body i will go to raw here i will create a new expense so in the json format i need to give the name of the expense let's say shopping and amount let's say 1000 and if i try to send it let's see okay so we are getting 201 created so this expense was successfully created so now let me actually show you the sqlite db so if i refresh it you can see uh, we have uh, shopping and thousand as amount so this uh, got stored in our db successfully uh, now uh, let us try to test another view that was for updating so if i want to update this uh, thing so i will use a put request and i will let's say from shopping i will modify this to grocery and the amount i will say 10000 and now if i try to send a request okay so we did a mistake i have to say update now i will send and yes this will work so let's see in our db if i refresh this you see to grocery and 10000 okay uh, the last thing remaining is to check if delete is working or not. So I will send a delete request and we do not need any body or something for this. So I will hit send and yep, you can see. Now if I refresh, so there is nothing in LDB. Now the only thing remaining is to integrate this backend API with our frontend. So let's see how we can do that. So I have opened my uh, frontend app and this is running on this server. So if we see this is how it looks and inside my store like this is the previous implementation that we did when it was not integrated with the api so i will be modifying these functions only to handle api calls and modifying it so firstly let me add a package here so i will first close this and i will say yarn add axios so axios as you know is used to make api calls so we will be using this Okay, and now I will again run the server. Right, so first I will create a constant for our API URL. That is, as you know, on one terminal I am running the Python server. So that is running on this port. I will copy this and I will paste it here. And I will say API, this will be called API URL. 
right so this is the basic api url okay so the first thing now is to show whenever the app loads uh, the very first time i need to fetch the already existing expenses from my database and load them here for that i will create a new function inside my store that will be for fetching expenses so i will call this as fetch expenses this will be an async function inside this uh, what i want to do is i want to make an api call so i will say const response is equal to await axios dot get and i will pass this api url to it and once uh, i have got the response i will update my state so i will say expenses to be response dot data and for the total computation i will use the reduce function so i will say response dot data dot reduce if you do not know how you can use reduce uh, so i will encourage you to check out my uh, polyfill video on reduce in that i have explained in depth like how reduce works internally and how you can use it to efficiently do something like this that we are doing now so definitely check that out also i need to pass an initial value to reduce let it be zero i will say accumulator is equal to accumulator plus percent that will be current value dot amount because current value will be an object that we are iterating over and i want to extract the amount from it that's why i am doing this and i will simply say return accumulator and save it right so fetch expenses is done let us first test this fetch expenses if this is working correctly or not here uh, what i will do is i will say use effect and inside use effect i will call my fetch expenses so let me just extract it from here i think i have exported okay so this will be exported here i will call fetch expenses and give an initial dependency array of empty so this should update the expenses and that i will see here expenses dot map okay so i did a small mistake so i did not import axios that's why the api call was not being made so if i now go to uh, my localhost where my front end app is running so in the networks tab you can see uh, an api call was made and in the response we have got an empty array because obviously there are no items in it cool so fetch expenses is done uh, now let's move on to uh, how we will add an expense using that api okay so to add a new expense what i will do i will move this set inside this and before actually setting it uh, we want to do one thing so i will say this is an async function i will format it quickly okay so inside this function before setting the state i will create a payload that will have the name and amount so i am creating a new object that i will pass like in postman we were executing a post request and in the body we were sending a json formatted uh, like body in which name and amount were there so similarly i'm creating an object here and what i will do is i will say const response is equal to await axios dot post i will say uh, the url so the url that we are hitting and for the payload uh, i will say this payload that i have created so this will return me a response i will get my newly created object with an id inserted in it so that i will set in my uh, zestand store so for that what i will do is instead of manually doing this now i will simply do response dot data right i hope you understand this now let's test this so if i go to my app i will refresh the page first api call will go i will try to add an expense let's say cinema amount 500 i will click on add expense okay so an api call was made 
uh, with and in the response as you can see we are getting id name and amount and this thing i'm setting in my redux store so if i show you my redux dev tools so you can see in my tree in the expenses i am getting this so name amount and id so let us add another item to it and click on add expense the api call will go and we have juice and amount here obviously we can uh, like add a loader in it like while this is being added we can disable the button and we can show a loader uh, while the expenses are being fetched or a new expense is being added but let's see uh, how we can complete the core functionality first so now coming to the edit expenses part uh, so what i will do here is so same like add expense uh, i will create a payload first so before setting this i will say const payload is equal to id name and amount in it and i will make the api call so i will again say const response is equal to await axios dot uh, not get rather put and here i will say the api url and see the api url is like this and while updating i need to pass an id here as well uh, ap apart from that i need to do something like this update slash one if i need to update with the id one i need to do it like this and our raw url is like this so i need to append it here so what i will do is i will construct a url which will say api url and i will pass in the payload yeah await is giving an error saying this should be an async function cool and once i've received the response uh, what i will do is if this id matches i will say response dot data otherwise the existing response and for the updated total i think this would work let's see this uh, let us test this once if i go to my expense tracker and see where i'm using this edit expense right so before setting the expense id to null i think i should await these calls because both of them are async functions and this also will be an async function if i'm using a wait inside it i will refresh the page once clear the logs list of expenses if i try to edit an expense here instead of cinema i will call it as movie and here i will say 5000 if i click on edit okay we have an issue oh yeah my bad this has to wait i will refresh it okay that means i don't want to do this let's clear the console hit edit expense and here you go so the status code was 200 and in the response we are getting the updated thing right and that is being replaced here so let's edit this as well instead of juice i will say milk i will click on edit and another request was gone milk and amount we have returned and we have set this and the amount also you can see is correctly being reflected if i refresh the page so yep we are getting this cool so the last part that is remaining is to add the delete functionality uh, for this what i will do is i will again move this set inside this function save it and i will do something like await axios dot delete and i will say api url and we will not repeat the mistake that we did earlier so i will say and that should be it and if we are using await this function has to be async and once this is done so we are just setting our state like we were doing earlier and yep here let us see where we are using delete expense okay so here i can use await and this can be an async function all right let's see if this is working i will clear all this i will click on this okay so we are getting a 404 in headers uh, 
what request I'm giving via URL update three. Okay, so this is there is some issue here. Let's see. Actually, also delete. Okay, dollar. Save it. Go again. Click delete. Right. So the request was gone to this API endpoint. And in the response, we have got nothing. This is 204 no content. Right. And if I delete this as well, so this is gone. Uh, let's let me uh, check one thing. So if I say sugar 100 and if I say oil 200, if I delete this, so my okay so the total computation is also correct that's uh, what i wanted to check all right so our cred functionality is working fine so we have integrated our react plus the stand front end with the django backend and the reason why we are doing uh, the api call and handling uh, all this data in the resistance store itself is because we want to keep our component uh, like as clean as possible and we want to move any business logic in our resistance store so everything is consolidated at one place rather than being scattered at multiple places like uh, if in future there is some issue or we want to debug something we want to add or remove any functionality relating to api we know that we only want to uh, like deal with one file that is store and not go to multiple components where the api will be used so that is why we are doing everything related to API in the store itself. So that is one reason. So now I'm giving this task to you all to add loaders and disabled states to buttons and these buttons and add some loader while the list is being fetched. And if you're deleting or editing something, you should not be able to like uh, make another request immediately until one thing is completed and handle the errors as well. Let's see if we encounter some error from backend, then how will you handle it? Will you show a toast here or will you show any message here? So that should be an extended functionality on top of this CRUD feature. So that I will leave for you guys to implement. And so I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I will definitely bring more content on uh, Django, Zest and React and all these things in future. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.